Hello, my friends. I have a really, really fun guest today. We're going to be talking about pelvic health. We're going to be talking about the mom life, and we're going to be talking about jump roping. I have jump rope mom on with me. This is Carly Kent. And Carly, just go ahead and say hi for a minute, and then I'll say hi. Hey guys. Little. I'm excited to be here today. Thank you. Yes, I am so excited too. And Carly actually reached out to me, and we, uh, collaborated to create a little video on her YouTube channel, which is Jump Rope Mom. And she does, well, I'll let her explain a little more about what she does. But we did a video uh, about pelvic health and how you can prepare your pelvic floor for jump roping because jump roping is such an amazing exercise uh, that a lot of women feel like they have to stay away from, especially if they are starting to notice some bladder leakage or prolapse issues or anything like that. A lot of times after having babies, women start to leak a little bit and they're like, oh my gosh, there's no more trampoline, no more jump rope, no more any of this. And so they've lost that part, you know, that option for fitness, or at least they think that they've lost it. So that's what we wanted to address in the video that I did on her channel. And I'll link that up in the show notes so you can uh, check it out. But we're going to talk more about that today, more about pelvic health and all that. Um, and also more about you, Carly. So let's just dive in. And I'd love for you to share first off a little more about your story with jump roping. And if you have any pelvic health stuff to pop in there about yourself, please go ahead and do it. Nothing is too much for my audience. Okay, cool. So yeah, I am. Um... I am a former competitive jump roper. I started jumping rope when I was six years old, and uh, I did that throughout a lot of my youth. And then after I had my first son, I have two boys, ages eight and five. I uh, was trying to figure out how I can get fit around the house because you know how hard it is to leave to go to the gym or do anything. And um, I had this idea that I was going to start jumping rope again just for fitness. I had one like laying around the house, so. Um, I started jumping rope and then I would take it to like the parks while they were playing and just get in some cardio. And then that started blossoming into like all these people, mostly moms wanting to jump rope with me and their kids, just because if the kids aren't jumping rope with us, they are entertained by us. <laughs> so we look like a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So I started jumping rope again just for fitness. And um, then that blossomed into my whole like YouTube channel of jump rope fitness things and also now I've been teaching all these tricks because I swear it's like riding a bike, like it all comes back to you. So a lot of the tricks that I used to do, I do now and now I help teach them, um, which is a lot of fun. But then, uh, yeah, I realized also, which nobody talks about, is um, a lot of women, including myself, will leak when we're jumping. I, <laughs> I mean, I remember after um, I had my first, I went to the trampoline park and I started jumping around feeling great because I was also a gymnast. And I was like, oh, Oh, this is great and then all of a sudden I like I remembered I like <laughs> and I was like oh my god like I had no idea and I thought something was wrong with me like I'm like I did not know that was a common thing um until I started researching it and then again still I was too nervous to like talk about it because I didn't really you know want to share that I'm like peeing my pants um <laughs> but honestly I think a lot of us are peeing our pants we don't know like we think it's sweat but um anyway so and when I've been doing jumping rope, I've just been having a lot of women say, oh, I can't do it. Like, I'll pee my pants, this and that. And I'm like, no, you can. There are ways that we can build our muscles. And so then that's when I reached out to you because it's just been so common. And I'm like, I need to get these women help. Like, we can all build it. I build my own just doing pelvic floor exercises. Um, there's still certain things that I have to be careful with. But for the most part, I'm pretty good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's why I reached out to you just to figure out how we can help other women and, and let them know that it's totally common, whether or not we have kids or not, like those muscles, you know, weaken over time and we definitely need to build them for a lot of other reasons too, you know, just for like sex, life, use it for. So, um, yeah, so that's been and then connecting the dots and, um, helping us build other muscles and just like our arms and legs. <laughs> That's amazing. So I'm curious. I, I know that some women have reached out to you with specific stories. Have you ever had a woman who wasn't, you know, was having leakage or was having some kind of complication and then started jumping and actually things got better? And then on the other hand, have you had some women who've had to stop jumping rope completely because things got worse? Have you ever seen like extremes in one direction or the other? 
I have seen extremes in one direction or the other. And there is some quick fixes. Um, a lot of women and what we see jumping rope is, is jumping rope with two feet together. Um, and what we don't realize if you, if they can jog lightly and not pee their pants, you can jump rope and not pee your pants. It's actually a very low impact activity. As long as we are doing it in proper form, which is jumping on the balls of our feet, no more than one to two inches off the ground with a mat. And if, and if you have like good supportive shoes, that's even better, but just jumping alternate foot, like a light jog usually helps 90% of women if they think they're going to pee their pants when they're, you know, jumping. Because if you can run, you can definitely jump rope. But doing alternating foot, so jumping right, left, right, left, instead of two feet together, help, like, immediately. And um, actually, my neighbor, yeah, she had some major issues with um, leakage and just lifting heavy things. Like, she would just leak, so she couldn't do that at the gym. Um, and she started doing some pelvic floor exercises, some breathing techniques, which has been huge. And just make sure that we empty our bladder before an AM exercises is way better than our PM exercises, you know, for that stuff, just because our bladder is a lot less empty. Um, so that's, yeah, that's one thing. And then, of course, I've had women that had no idea they were peeing their pants and then started jumping rope. And they're like, whoa, I'm like leaking. What What is this all about? Um, but now I have a great <laughs> thing to explain to them and your Kegel camp that I can direct them to, which has been amazing. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I wanted to talk about that too. Well, first off, I wanted to say that one thing I think would be really helpful for people, and I think I share this in the video that I did on your channel, was about just kind of priming your pelvic floor before the jump roping session by doing a couple kegels just to sort of tell your, your body, okay, these are the muscles that need to be maybe a little bit extra on because the pelvic floor muscles, they're stability postural muscles, so they're always on. But when you yeah. are jumping, they're going to be need to maybe be a little extra on to help to help. But at the same time, you don't want to have to be like clenching a really crazy kegel the whole time that yeah. you're the rope. And so, um, do you ever have people, or do you ever kind of like prime your pelvic floor by just doing a couple of little kegels before you start? your session just to kind of um, tell your body. I should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is something I'm going to talk about. No, I've never really thought about priming it before. Mm -hmm. uh, but that would probably be a great way to introduce, especially a lot of my workouts with my, with my moms. I have some postpartum workouts. That would be a great thing to start is priming kind of our pelvic floor before that. Yeah. Just like, okay, these are the muscles we want to, you know, they want to be a little extra on again, not a clench. We don't want them to be like, ah, oh, feeling like they have to squeeze and clench everything the whole time. Cause that would just be too much, but just a little yeah. to kind of like wake things up a bit. And then they'll naturally, especially if you've built up that strength, that foundational strength over time with things like Kegel camp, they'll naturally just be able to support everything during their jump rope session. And so I want to bring in that Kegel camp. So I, if anyone, you know, doesn't know, I have a program called Kegel camp. It's a 30 day program and it's slowly building. So it gradually builds in intensity. And for someone who's going through wanting to get into jump roping again, and maybe they're a little unsure about it, it's a really great foundational place to start to just, like I said, build up that strength. And you have some people going through this program right now, Carly. Um, how, how's it going? Like, have you noticed anything or have people talked about anything or? I do. Let's see. What day are we on? We are on day 11. Kurt, your videos are amazing. I love them. They're like a slow progress for all of us. Um, no, it's been really fun. We're all getting really comfortable with our body. <laughs> because, you know, some of those positions and breathing techniques is not something that you usually do with like a bunch of people around. Um, but they're good. It's good. We love, I, I'm loving it. I'm getting really comfortable with them. But no, it, yeah, you can definitely tell in the breathing and just like, um, yes, yeah, techniques that I would not have known properly, I should say, because you, you explain it really, really helps just connect it all together because the, a lot of us just kind of rush through them naturally, you know, but, um, being able to do them with you and feel more comfortable because you're doing them. <laughs> I'm not the only one looking crazy. Um, it's really great. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's a statistic. It's a sad statistic that about 50% of women are doing kegels wrong when they yeah. when they're kind of like reading instructions about how to do them or just kind of hear, oh, you should do kegels. They're where you, you know, squeeze your pelvic floor like you're stopping pee. And a lot of times people are, are maybe bearing down. They're kind of actually pushing out, which is actually the opposite of what we want to be doing. Or they're maybe just squeezing their belly muscles or squeezing their butt muscles. You know, yes, the butt muscles. Honestly, I was doing it wrong for years. And I definitely was, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it, your videos are everything to explain that because it's, it's a hard muscle to, you can't see it. You don't really know. It's a hard one to, to like 
trigger unless you're like really getting like a good explanation and really thinking about where you're squeezing exactly. Um, so yeah, that's been a game changer for all of us in there for sure. (laughs) Makes me happy. Well, I hope that you guys will have patience with it and go through the full 30 days and get a lot out of it. And I want, I I have a few questions for you, Carly, about anyone who wants to kind of like start out and kind of like, okay, I'm going to prepare my body with my Kegel camp and my, you know, my pelvic floor exercises, or maybe see a women's health physical therapist or whatever you need to do to really get that foundation strong. And then folks who are like, okay, I want to do this jump roping. I mean, obviously it has amazing cardiovascular benefits. It's good for your, um, for, for weight management and also good for building bone density and all those amazing things, boosting your metabolism, like all of this. So if someone's like, I'm in, I want to do this, where do they start? Like, obviously you mentioned the jogging, like the jogging in place jump rope and being light on your feet and all that. But I'm talking like really basics. What jump rope do you go by? Like, where do you, because I actually want to know this myself. This is a selfish question. I don't have a good jump rope. I've tried a few jump ropes. I don't even know where to start. So how do you a total newbie? who maybe is a person, because if they're watching this, listening to this, they probably have some kind of pelvic health concern. So total newbie. Go girl. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's like my loaded question. Um, There's so many different jump ropes and it really depends on what you want out of it. If you're watching this and a newbie, you're probably into fitness. Um, You don't need a fancy jump rope. You really don't. A PVC jump rope is perfect. I think it's the best. It's like the best weight. Um, not too heavy. You don't want to start off with weighted jump ropes if you're just getting into jumping rope. Uh, but you want something with a little bit of weight because you want to be able to hear the timing and rhythm of the jump rope. So a PVC jump rope, which is also known as a licorice jump rope, um, is a really great. Yeah, I'm so place. sorry to interrupt, but is that the kind that has the, that we remember from grade school that has like the multiple sections in a row? Do you know what I mean? Like it's multiple joints. Oh, uh, those are beaded jump ropes. Okay. So, yeah, I love how you explain that. That's really fun. Okay. Yeah. So, um, oh, well, side note, I also teach in elementary schools. I teach jump rope um, classes to all the elementary kids here in San Diego for their after school programs when we're in school. Um, and so, yeah, and we use licorice ropes or we use, some of them use the beaded ropes. A beaded rope, if you have one laying around, um, definitely kids have them. That's actually a great weight um, to start with as well. But I wouldn't, it's not something I want to, you'd want to keep using. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit slower than what you'd want, but just like a PVC jump rope. Um, I'll talk later about my jump rope I'm coming out with, but, um, yeah, you don't need anything super fancy. Just like your basic PVC jump rope is perfect place to start. Um, Amazon, wherever you can find those on there as well. Awesome. So is a PVC jump rope, the kind that's quite thin, like the cord is quite thin. Yeah. It actually kind of looks like your phone charger cable. Okay. Uh, if I were to, I can't believe I'm like in my office right now. I usually have jump ropes all over the place. Here I have one. Okay. One right here. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a PC cord. It's thicker ones, which are heavier, half pound, quarter pound ropes, which I love to use for my um, workouts just because you burn more calories or recruit more muscle faster. Um, but if you're just starting out, something a little bit thinner um, is great, uh, which is like that, about the size of your um, yeah phone charger. Okay, perfect. Okay, so people need that. And then would you, you know, you'd rec, I'm a complete advocate of barefoot workouts. But I understand that for jumping rope, people probably want to start out with shoes or Oh my god, yeah, so you don't want to do barefoot with jumping rope. Um, as you can do it. Yeah, that would really hurt your muscles. Um, yeah, so I you just want to make sure you have a good supportive pair of shoes that really support the ankle, um, especially if anyone has super flat feet or really high arches, you really want to make sure that you're supporting that and it'll just help keep the activity very low impact. And if you can jump rope on a mat that helps as well. Um, it's especially for beginners. You want to, when we're first starting out, a lot of our um, ankle and foot muscles don't get worked on the daily. Um, and so when you're jumping rope, you're probably going to get sore if you have not been jumping rope, just because it's going to activate a lot of muscles that we don't normally build. So you want to slowly build your way up. I would start at 30 second intervals, 30 seconds off, and just kind of do that and listen to your body. Some people can start off at a minute. Some need to taper it down and start off at 30 seconds, but just, yeah, slowly progress over the week and add maybe 30 seconds here or there because it will happen overnight. You're going to wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, my shins or whatever. So you just want to make sure you start slow at first and then gradually build your way up. 
And then I would definitely start alternating foot, right, left, right, left, and just get a nice comfortable jump in that way. Um, and then in, like in my exercises, I like to do 30 seconds of jumping rope and then some body weight exercises or 30 seconds jump rope, ab exercises, just kind of switch it up um, throughout your workout, which makes it fun <laughs> and effective. Yeah. And what do you think about mini trampolines as kind of in a way to work up to jump roping as well? Because they're a little bit lower impact in a way since they have that give. Yeah, they do. Yeah, you do jump though with two feet together, which definitely puts a lot more pressure in your pelvic floor. I honestly will leak more on um, a trampoline than I do jumping rope. So I we go a lot. My, I have two boys and they are wild. And anytime it is too hot here, I go to the indoor trampoline park, which is a couple times a week uh, when it's open. And um, yeah, I literally, I, I like try to go like jumping one at a time because when I'm jumping, like, there, like I, I, I do leak. I leak all the time. I don't know if it's because I jump up high and then land, like land straight down. But anytime my feet are together and I'm doing like a lot of impact, it's, um, yeah, you can totally leak. But I'm also building. I'm starting your, um, your 30 day on day 11, which has been really nice. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm gonna test it after this. <laughs> it's perfect. It's gonna help you, girl. And I love, I love the take home message then that the alternating feet is really such a great option. And I know yeah. I. I have a little mini, one of the little rebounders, like a very small little home trampoline, I guess. And yeah. I, I am able to do alternating jumping on that. And I'm with you. That is a lot easier on the pelvic floor than the yeah. both together. Absolutely. I hadn't really, I hadn't really made that connection. So thank you for that. Um, yeah. and I wanted to, I have a question. oh yeah, go ahead. Is, does caffeine trigger it more? Oh, well, caffeine will make your bladder more sensitive. And so okay. for sure, it's going to make your bladder more almost like irritated, potentially. I mean, it's, I don't want to imply that caffeine is irritating everyone's bladder, but it's a diuretic. And so it makes yeah. you need to go to the bathroom more. And in some people, it can actually irritate their bladder. And so your bladder is going to be a little more sort of like, eh, let's get this pee out of us, you know, because yeah. it's a diuretic, it's a stimulant and, and. Um, also potentially irritating. So yeah, for sure. Okay. As I will add, I do like to have my coffee in the morning when having that. It's early here. Um, and I noticed that like if I drink more coffee and try to do like some harder jumps, like I will, I'll leak. And as opposed to like, if I go without drinking my coffee in the morning, even if it's just water, I, I don't have as big of an issue. So so was it if that was just me or if I'm like connecting something here? <laughs> well, you're absolutely connecting something. That's a big question. And I wanted to throw in one more thing for this sort of beginners, like since we're thinking about beginners, one thing that I know I did put on your video on the video that I have on your channel is an idea or a suggestion for building up that strength in your foot and leg muscles and also just getting your pelvic floor kind of used to the idea slowly of getting into jumping. And that is to jump up onto like some yes blankets or like a mat, some kind of surface. It's not, you know, an inch or two. It doesn't have to be big, but just a little prepare your pelvic floor, do a little tiny little gentle kegel, nothing crazy, and then just jump up and then step down yeah. and release. Yeah. So I love that. It's a very, very baby step. And again, some people might be like, ah, I'm beyond that. That's boring. But if you're really, really, you know, needing support with your pelvic health and you're like, I really want to do this right, then take the time to spend a week or so just doing that little gather up the pelvic floor. So do your tiny gentle kegel, preparing yourself, mentally setting the muscles, priming them, jump up onto the two inch mat and then step down and release. I love that. Yeah. When you showed that, I'm like, that is a great idea. That's a great like first step to start with. Um, when doing that, yeah, because a lot of us, a lot of women haven't been jumping or doing like, you know, those type of exercises. I mean, when are we jumping? We don't jump. No. So yeah, no, we stop jumping and we stop dancing when we get older. That's I mean, oh my gosh. Gosh. yeah, I know. right? Yeah, not everybody, but I feel like a lot of people do stop jumping and stop dancing. And so it's time to bring both of those back into the, the lives of us women. It's so good for us. And so I want you, Carly, to kind of wrap us up by telling me about your new project. You have a jump rope, yes? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> this has been in the making for like 14 months. This is like my third baby I never had. Um, <laughs> yes, so I have had this desire to come up with my own jump rope. Um, I have used probably every jump rope under in the planet, unless it was released this week. Um, and, but I just wanted to make it like exactly how I want it. And so I have been like 
just coming up with these ideas and working with a supplier of like exactly what I want. I don't want anything overcomplicated. I just want something that's going to help and be simple and easy for all my beginner jumpers, as well as just people that want to build up their endurance and fitness levels. Um, and so it has finally come to fruition um, after this 14 months. And um, my jump rope is going to be called Gratitude Ropes. And I am so excited that came to me. I know I'm like, <laughs> there's a whole story to that. I don't talk about the whole thing, but um, gratitude ropes came to me probably three years ago when I was like literally at a time I just um, had my second child, you know, a couple years. Ago, I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted it to be meaningful. I wanted to be impactful. And I wanted to be able to stay home with my kids. Like I didn't want to leave them. And I was no joke at Legoland and I was uh, just like in line with my kids. And I just had this like idea of like teaching jump rope. And I was like, Oh my gosh, that's what I want to do. Like I want to teach jump rope. Like that would be so amazing. I'm like, I don't know how, I don't know who's going to listen, but I'm like, I'm just going to go for it. You know, when you get those like little voices that come to you and you just know like, yeah, I'm going to go for that. And so, um, that moment right there, ever since that moment, I've just been so thankful and just been like saying gratitude just for like every day of like, Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. This is Life. And so then I was like, when I launch that to someone else or gratitude for like the mailman dropping our package off, whatever it is, it's like such an amazing, great reminder just to start off with gratitude. Um, jump rope, it's going to say gratitude on there. Well, it says gratitude on there. Um, just as a great reminder. And I want to start my workouts with this little, really quick, just gratitude of, you know, whatever that day helped me or whatever the day before or something like all of us that we can be thankful for something. Right. Um, so with that said, my rope is getting launched and it is like um, kind of a three in one jump rope. I'm going to have a beginner four millimeter jump rope, which is what I was talking about. It's like a thin one um, for anybody that wants for anyone just starting out or just wants like a speed. And then you can switch in a quarter pound rope and half pound rope. It's just going to interlock in the handles, which is going to be amazing. Um, so I'm working on that right now. It is um, in the process of getting shipped over here, um, but it'll probably be out in about 30 days. So um, I'm really excited. I'll have my website. It's going to be gratituderopes.com. Um, and you guys got to check it out. I'm really, really excited. It's like my baby and I've been uh, using it for the past month and it has been so fabulous. So, so there was a little bit of a cut out in what you were saying. Oh. We got, it's okay. I think we got most of it, but um, I want to just make sure that that I didn't miss. Did you say what the design of the jump? Cause what you mentioned your story about how you just are, were so grateful every day for having that thought come to you and that idea to really change your life and change other people's yeah. lives too, by doing this. And so you're, you have so much gratitude for for this, but then it got cut out a little bit, but I think, did you mention the design of the new jump rope? Like what is it? Yeah. Like? It's going to say um, gratitude. My logo is so cute. It's going to say gratitude engraved on the handles of the jump rope. Oh. Um, which, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a great reminder for whatever you're doing. Whatever you start your workout, just be grateful for just even starting your workout or whatever you want to be. But it will be a good reminder just to have that on there because uh, we all need that reminder. All do, especially right now during these times. Like, it is the best thing that we can do for ourselves, even if it's just once a day, to just be able to give gratitude. Oh, my gosh. A grateful heart is where all miracles start. It's just like joy and exactly. good is where goodness comes in. So I love yeah. this. I want a gratitude yeah. rope. I got to get one. I'll, I'll put the link in the show notes, the video notes, if you're watching this on YouTube or my podcast or however you're, you're consuming this content, just check the notes and there will be links for you to check that out. So, wow, awesome. Carly, I am going to, let's go ahead and wrap this up. But is there anything that you'd like to leave people with? We've covered so much. Goodness, you know, pelvic health issues, where to start if you're a total beginner foundation, strength building, yeah. table camp, gratitude ropes, my goodness, what, is there anything else? Um, no, what I tell all women, especially if this is mostly women watching this, just um, don't be scared to take time for yourself. Uh, I think all of us, we just get so caught up in caring for so many other people that we don't take the time to do these pelvic floor exercises or to do just anything that we love um, and just know that it's okay and it makes us the best version of ourselves when we can take some time out of our day and just do something for ourselves is where I want to leave it at <laughs> I just feel like we don't hear that enough and we feel guilty um, for doing that. So. Yeah. And let me just add one thing to that simply because it's fresh on my mind. I just did this calculation about time, um, the time that it takes to do like a 10 minute exercise program. So like 10 minute abs, I just finished a course with daily Ohm. That's it's 10 minute abs. It's a great course. Mm -hmm. it's a little 
workouts, my Kegel camp, the videos are about 10 to 12 minutes. They're short. You yeah. know, honestly, for jump roping, I know that I could not do more than 10 minutes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I maybe work out, but anyway, what I'm saying is these brief periods of time or a 10 minute meditation, you know, these little things of self care, even if they're really short, a lot of people like feel that they don't have time for that. And I get it. I totally get it. We're all like busy moms, a lot of us busy people, but 10 minutes is literally, it's like 0.7. I did the calculation out of a 24 hour period. It's like 0.7% of a 24 hour period. And if you'd make your day like 15 hours, like your waking hours, say it's 15 mm -hmm. hours, it's something like 1.1% of that. Yeah. It's a tiny fraction. You can do it. We've got to do it. You've got to do it. You've got 1.1% of your waking 15 hour day. You can do that. You can address that self care time and it's going to benefit you so much, which is then oh going to benefit your family, your work life, all of it. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Girl, I give you a big hug if I could. Just pretend you can, you, you've got it. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and for getting up early. Of course. This was so fun. Thank you. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Bye.